Freed from Sin www.lesliejohn.net Freed from Sin God is sovereign. His commandments, whether they were in verbal form or in written form, are to be obeyed in perfection. Violation will result either in severe punishment or mild chastisement, unless violator confesses the sin to the Lord and prays for forgiveness. Adam and Eve were created by God, and because they were his creation, they were bound to obey his laws but they transgressed the commandment of God, resulting in their spiritual death instantly and physical death after few years. Because of the transgression of God's laws by the first parents, Adam and Eve, that their posterity has inherited their sin, and God has declared by imputation every one of their posterity as sinners. Thus, mankind has become enemies to God. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it for in the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die. Genesis 2 16 to 17 Man has become liable to pay the penalty for his sin. It is by Lord Jesus Christ's voluntary acceptance of offering himself as a sacrifice, and to die on behalf of mankind, that reconciliation of God's creation to God was made. Jesus, the Son of God and the God incarnate, humbled himself and came down from heaven to this earth, in the form of a servant, and in the likeness of man. Apostle Peter says, Forasmuch as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, 1 Peter 1 18-19 KJV. It pleased the Father to offer his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ as sacrifice on behalf of mankind. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him he hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand, Isaiah 53 10 KJV. Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, summarized entire law into few beautiful and impressive statements. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength this is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these, Mark 12 28 to 31 KJV. Romans 8 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. The law points out the transgression, and sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is missing the mark. God commanded Adam verbally not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and said to him that on the day he eats he will surely die. Adam and Eve transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and they not only instantly died spiritually, but they also died physically after their lifespan, predetermined by God, was over. In the days of Moses, God gave ten commandments to the children of Israel through his servant Moses to obey the laws and keep the Lord's statutes. But they failed to keep them. God detailed the punishments the children of Israel would suffer if they disobeyed his laws. No one could earn salvation by his or her good works neither in the days of Old Testament nor in the New Testament period. God never had set doing good works as the standard or criterion for man to receive salvation. Instead the Lord set offering of sacrifices in the Old Testament period to cover their sins, only to be ratified, as righteous, by God through the shed blood of Lord Jesus Christ, subsequently. Likewise, now in this New Testament period, God never had set doing good works as the means for man to receive salvation. It is by grace of God through faith in him alone that man can receive salvation. The Lord has laid down a condition that salvation will be available for only those who ask for it through his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ as explained in Romans 10 9-10. Read. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, Romans 10 9 to 10 KJV. Man will do good works after receiving salvation. He will not sin if he is truly saved. The scripture is clear about it. Read. Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law for sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. Whosoever abides in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him, 1 John 3 4 to 6 KJV. However, no man in this world is perfect. We all commit sin inadvertently or sometimes even on purpose, which will not be the cause for God to cast away the believer. God will chastise him her and bring him her back to his fold. God has provided provision for it and said, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us, 1 John 1 8 to 10 KJV. Lord Jesus Christ said these words that never fail. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand, John 10 28 KJV. The law was given to man to obey, and to keep them so as to see that everyone has equal rights, and everything in order. Jesus encompassed all the Ten Commandments in just two verses and they are. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength this is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these, Mark 12 30-31 KJV. If everyone kept the law there would be no transgression of the law and there would have been perfect peace and discipline in the world. However, every man's attitude, behavior, and character differs from the other and therefore, there will be surely transgression of the law. God's purpose of giving law for man to obey was primarily to see human beings love Almighty God, the Creator, with all their soul, with all their mind, and with all their heart and secondly to love one another just as they love themselves. If the law was kept perfectly mankind would have never become slaves of Satan. The law was given with good intention and the law was, and is good. However, because law has only provision to condemn a sinner, and thereby rendering him pay the penalty, the resolution to get away from that punishment is only the grace. The said grace comes from the only Savior Lord Jesus Christ. His grace is afforded free of cost when man believes in the efficacy of the blood shed on the cross by Lord Jesus Christ in his stead. For the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, Romans 6 23. When a man believes in Lord Jesus Christ and accepts his lordship over him the law of sin and death is passed away from him, and he is made free from condemnation to death. He receives the spirit of life, otherwise known as, Holy Spirit. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10 9.